Hi, and welcome to Tony's Cool Tools. Appreciate you stopping by. September is the month where everyone gets serious about making firewood. The temperatures are cooler, and it's a lot more comfortable to split firewood. However, my family is excited because we get to harvest something else from wood, and that's apples. So in today's video, we're going to have some fun with some fruit trees, specifically apple trees. My family traditionally gets together in September once the apples are ready and have a cider press party. We make one of my most favorite drinks, and that's apple cider. Here's the tool that I use to process my apples into apple cider. Last year on video 36, I did a video very similar to this on processing apples. And a number of viewers contacted me asking where they could get a press like this. Now this apple press is an antique, and it's manufactured by the Hocking Valley Manufacturing Company in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and they're no longer in business. So the way I found it is I went on Craigslist or Facebook, I forget which one, and bought it several years ago. I did find an alternative, and it's a company that manufactures stainless steel apple presses in the United States. They're a modern day version of this. And being stainless steel, it's super easy to clean, unlike the wooden parts here. And here it is, the Harvest Fiesta. It's manufactured by a company ironically called the Sausage Maker. And they're based out of Buffalo, New York. And you're wondering, what does the Sausage Maker company have to do with apple presses? Well, they make equipment and supplies for the hobby or professional sausage maker, as well as anyone who's processing apples or, or grapes or anything else that they want to juice. And they know a thing or two because they've been around since 1972. And as you can tell, things haven't changed in a couple hundred years. They still process the same way. They use this threaded rod on either one of them with a push plate, and it just squeezes all the mash or the pulp down and when you're through, you get the juice from the apples, the grapes, the tomatoes, or the pomegranates. And when it comes to cider, you can make regular cider or hard cider. And you can go one step further with your hard cider, and that is you can distill it and make 100% alcohol, better known as moonshine. And that's for medical or medicinal purposes only. And similar to the maple syrup or the honey that we produce, everything is raw and natural. We do not pasteurize. So let me give you some more information on this Fiesta Harvest fruit press. And as I mentioned, it is made of stainless steel. The dimensions are 16 by 26 by 32 inch high. And the basket here holds 15 liters, or in US terms, four gallons. And the press itself weighs 44 pounds. So check this out. It also has a telescoping table right here so that you can pull this out and you can easily load the pulp or take the pulp out when you're through. Now there's one thing we're missing. If we took this apple or bunch of apples and just put them inside this basket and use this screw to try to squeeze the juice out of it, we wouldn't get much. Let me show you what we're missing. Now this is the apple crusher by the sausage making company as well. It mounts onto the apple press here and let me show you how it works. You just put it around here. There's a tray that comes down here. You crank this handle and inside there's a row of eight serrated teeth. that crushes the apples and makes pulp, or makes big ones into small ones, just like what we do with firewood. And just as an FYI, for those left-handers here, this is an ambidextrous machine. You can switch this handle here from the right side to the left side. So all you southpaws don't have to convert to being right-handed. Now the apple crusher can be mounted to the table with either screws or clamps right here, or you can hang it right on the wall right here, whichever is easiest for you. Let me show you what I used last year to crush my apples. Well, before we start producing any cider, we got to get the raw product. Last year, this tree was filthy, and typically every other year we get apples. This time, this year, it's more apples this year than it was last year. Check it out.
And here's the tools that we use to harvest our apples. Standard apple picking baskets right here with little hooks on them. Or we use our hands and the ladder. There sure is a lot of apples up here. So we found out yesterday that we needed another tool that we have, and that is the pinchers right here. These have rubber tongs on them, and they pick up the apples pretty good. Because as you can see on the bottom, it's tough, and it's hard on your back as well. Let me show you how easy it is. I can reach over and just pick them up without a lot of trouble. That's a bad one. So we refined our process even more. Instead of picking it with the picker, I bring it closer in and then we hand pick them from the bottom. We're standing in one place so we're not bending over as much. Well, we had to go to plan B. Yesterday when we were picking on the ground and on the ladder, every time we pulled an apple, we had three or four drop on the ground and we didn't know which ones went into the rotten pile and not. So we brought some tarps today and we're gonna use the shaker method. Here we go. That's working pretty good. Well, now we're on the other side of the tree. Let's see how much we can get out of this side. So here's our harvest for about an hour and 15 minutes. Not a bad haul here. Check it out. Now these are the apples that we harvested out of three trees. We estimate, we took some scale measurements out of the five gallons and we estimate we have 375 pounds of apples here. So we'll see how many gallons we get out of that. Let me show you the process that we're doing here. First, we have all our apples here and we will go through them and any of the good ones that have no blemishes, we'll keep them for cold storage later on. But what we do is we take it from here to the vinegar bath right over here and clean them up, put them into clean water right over here, and then we're gonna take them over here and process them on the new Harvest Fiesta crusher and apple press. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. Vinegar bath, we just do a light rinsing in there, switch them to the clean water here, now one thing I forgot to mention before is, if we have any of the wind-blown apples that are blemished, all we do is cut that section off. If it's too bad, we just throw this away. But most of them are not super bad, and as you can see, good, good meat right there. So those are good for grinding. Here's the easy way to pick up apples. As I mentioned earlier, there are eight serrated knives in there. So this is our first batch going through the first Harvest Fiesta grinder here. And they say to put about two or three in there. Check out what it does here inside. That is nice pulp. Well, I screwed up. I forgot to put the mesh bag inside the basket. And even though we don't need it because these sides are pretty small, this is a lot thinner and it'll hold a lot more mash without going through the sides. Okay. 
and I'll probably mount this on the table next time so I have more leverage. Okay, we got our first batch done. And let me show you in just a second. First, I'm gonna take this off because we have to get it, we have to move this all the way up so that we can get the mash bucket underneath. Now we're gonna take this and slide it over. And as you can see, we didn't go all the way to the top. Their recommendations are not to go all the way to the top, about three quarters of the way, you get more. And as you can see, we already have apple juice at the bottom. Now, the moment of truth. First, I will take the netting here, put it inside, tuck it in. And here we go. Let the magic begin. Look at that liquid gold. And if you check it out inside here, we've almost compressed it down to a quarter of its size. Give it a couple more turns. And we're done. And now here's the benefit of this telescoping table. All I need to do is push it over. I can grab the mash or the stuff that we've already done. And we're putting it in here because we're gonna save this for compost or for our deer. Okay, number two. All we're doing is folding this over now. This one's got more juice for sure in it. Look at that stuff flow. Now, as I said, you could do this with grapes, pomegranates, tomatoes, and naturally apples. Pears. Exactly. The audience said pears. Okay, now that we've got the juice, we double strain it into a bigger container. This is a six gallon container here, and then we'll siphon it off into the jugs later on. Boy, I wish you can, you, I wish you were here. The smell is unbelievable. I know they have scratch and sniff stuff, but I wish they had smell-o-vision or taste-o-vision, because this is awesome. And we're gonna strain it one more time as well. As I mentioned, we don't pasteurize this. This is all raw. All right, we're gonna use our safety siphon to take the six gallons here and put it in our carboy. Now we'll only fill five gallons in there, but let me show you how easy this works. Just jiggle that a little until it starts flowing. And there we go. Now I believe this one does three gallons per minute. And we're also double filtering it again. All right, now we're filling our half gallon containers we're using the, the safety siphon with the shutoff so it'll make it real easy. Man, that goes pretty doggone quick. That goes really quick. Okay. I'll have to top it off after. Yeah. Oh, everyone, and I truly want to be, or I truly want to apologize 
This is my daughter, Kristen, and my wife is behind the camera. As I said, this was a family affair. And Mike from Safety Siphon, your product worked extremely well. Well, we're finally through, and some key learnings here. Even though the crusher works real good, I wish it was motorized. Let me show you what we got. So we've got 18 total gallons, we have 13 half gallons, and one five gallon carboy here. And let me tell you, it is awfully good. So the key takeaways for me are, if I'm a hobbyist, this press and this crusher are pretty good. If you're going professional, you're gonna need something just a little bit bigger, but I will tell you, this got us through the job that you see here and didn't take us that long. Well, here's the mash that we put in and it's going into the mulch pile. And I can't help it if deer wanna eat some of this stuff, but this is a 10 cubic foot wheelbarrow. So as you can see, there was over 300 pounds of apples and it's all the way down to just a 10 cubic foot wheel. So if you're interested in making jerky, sausage, wine, or cider, the sausage making company is the place to go for your supplies and equipment. I'll have the contact information on the sausage maker company in the info section below. Hopefully you found this video interesting and entertaining, and if so, please like, share, and subscribe, and give me a thumbs up as well. And remember, pass it forward, make the world a better place. And don't be a tool. Watch Tony's Cool Tools. Until I see you next time, have a great day.